I'm Victoria Lawrence, the founder of the United School. One of the reasons that we started this school was uh, due to the fact that I have twin uh, boys with autism. And when we learned of their diagnosis, we started our search for challenging schools, schools that would look at them as equals and give them the same opportunities as their neurotypical peers. So the room that we decided upon for our technology room was a pretty sore sight. Uh, lacked a lot of inspiration. It just basically had the computers and some dirty desks. Hello, Scottsdale leadership. I'm Joe Exotic, and I'm here broadcasting to you from American Jail with the pleasure of introducing the individual team members from the best looking group to ever come through Scottsdale leadership history, the team remodels. She's the sweetest thing to happen in Scottsdale since warm apple pie and can be found at your local library, Skylar Larson. Hi, I'm gonna to talk to you about the ask that the United School for Autism included in their application for the Scottsdale Leadership Project Lead It Forward. The asks or the applications all included a must, a should, and a could outcome. So the must outcome was to repaint and to reorganize their computer lab. The should outcome was to do that, but also to add wall decals to the uh, room to possibly inspire the students for what jobs they might be able to find in the technology field. And the could was to do the above, but to also reorganize the computer setup area so that there would be a central outlet for each workstation and then also to add student chairs. To discuss demolition is the man who recently returned from the land down under and is rumored to have single-handedly put an end to the Australian wildfires with his bare hands. Paul, the dirty demolition man, Romero. Greetings. As you have heard, we were tasked with updating a computer slash filming classroom. We decided to do a complete makeover and to do as much as we possibly could on our own. The first and most obvious event was to basically move everything out of the classroom that we possibly could. And that included furniture, fixtures, uh, window coverings, blackboards, etc. On the second day, we pulled together again, taped the entire classroom, and painted it in less than six hours. The following week, we were able to then remove the carpeting uh, in about three hours. To discuss the new carpet and additional art projects is an individual who's more organized than a desk full of file folders. Your very own Class 34 representative, Jenna Cole. Replacing the carpet was not part of the original ask. However, we all knew right away that not fixing the torn up dirty old carpet was not an option. We wanted to transform the space and truly create a positive and encouraging tech and media environment for the students. So replacing that carpet was a no-brainer. We knew it was going to be costly and we developed strategies for reaching out to get the carpet donated. Dean Carter of Quality Floors AZ came through with free carpet squares, trim, and installation. Plus they threw an extra backup carpet squares for the school's future use and helped us remove the glue. Huge win for the project.
to discuss room configuration and table layout is a man who would love to tell you just how many minerals are in your local tap water and can most certainly distinguish the taste difference between Aquafina and Dasani, Andrew H2O Volkmer. The original table setup that was in the room was your standard computer lab row configuration. However, one of our goals was to make this space a more collaborative, modern feeling work area. We had a lot of great ideas to accomplish this, but power and cable sources for the computers put a real constraint on these ideas. Once we got in the room, however, with everything cleared out, we started moving around tables and came up with the pod configuration. The pod configuration allows for groups of four to collaborate, the teacher to walk freely from pod to pod, and free up some space in the entire room. And frankly, it just looks pretty good. So that's what we went with. And now to discuss cabinets for the project is a man who could often be found hiking the beautiful Superstition Mountains, Russ, the Soup Man, Carpenter. Hi. So one of the things that we talked with Victoria about when we were looking at the classroom for the first time is the cabinets. She was not crazy about the color. They're pretty bright and obnoxious. So we got together as a team and said, what can we do? And what we came up with is, why don't we cover these cabinets with some cool pictures that would inspire learning? So we ended up with this. We started out with lots of different concepts, but we finally ended up with these designs that show different locations and things like that. to discuss the media center and fundraising efforts for this project is a gentle soul. One who could be often seen rescuing kittens from very large trees for senior citizens. None other than Joseph Wilkinson. So when we started this project, we didn't have any funds available to purchase the items that were needed for a full scale remodel and therefore had to fundraise from the ground up. Once we reviewed our scope of items, we set a fundraising goal of $2,500. After we set our goal, we began to evaluate various fundraising tactics and found GoFundMe to be the most efficient due to its large scale reach and also because all donations went directly to the United School. Once up and running, we took to friends, family, colleagues, and associates to educate them about our cause and ultimately generate over $2,000 in just a couple of weeks. In addition to our GoFundMe efforts, Andrew and our friends at SRP came to the table with a very generous grant of $300. This grant, plus several other contributions, got us to achieve our goal of raising $2,500 for United School for Autism. As you know, sustainability is a huge piece to Project Lead It Forward, and we're very happy to announce that it is embedded in the very nature of what we've done here with this computer lab. First and foremost, brand new paint and carpet that will last for years and years and years to come. Then we've created a new workspace where students can personally show what technology means to them and take that idea that creativity with them home at the end of the year to further inspire new career opportunities for years to come. Next, to discuss some of the problems encountered and challenges with this project is a man who's recently married and a near fugitive with the French Polynesian government, Chris Pike. Hi, yeah, I wanted to talk about some challenges that we faced and lessons learned. Uh, as we got started on the project, uh, there was definitely some challenges that were more expected than others. One of those being just the people in the group where we're going to work well together. And as we got to know the team better, we really realized uh, that instead of needing one person to really crack the whip and, and, and kind of dictate the whole project, uh, we were lucky in that we didn't need that. Everybody had different experiences and were leaders in different areas. So it really felt like we all came together and were open to suggestions from everybody. One of the challenges that we first faced earlier on was that we didn't really realize how how to raise money. We knew we knew the basics of hey, we've got to ask folks for money, but where did we put it? 
Um, did we need to create a nonprofit uh, holding company? Were we going to have to pay taxes? We realized the best thing to do and what we went forward with was to, we just created a GoFundMe account and had that money go straight to the school. And that way uh, we did need to get reimbursed, which was a slight hassle, but not a huge deal uh, for any supplies or things that we bought on our own. But we were able to, any extra money is now still with the school. So they can use it for maintenance on, on the uh, computer room that we remodeled. They can use it as kind of an emergency fund as well. When we started seeing the impact of COVID, obviously the scope and the timeline of our project changed. Uh, we, we lost, a, we we're going to have a cool news segment with Channel 3 from Joe's team. Uh, that had to fall off. Uh, different vendors we worked with uh, either had to close their, their uh, production down or close their facilities, so stop pickup or, or anything like that. With no students at the school, uh, the art installation that we worked on, um, that, that's definitely on hold. And, and everybody's experiencing that right now. One of the great things about being a member of a community for over 20 years is knowing who the key players are that support that community. When we realized that we needed supplies for our remodeling project, and paint was one of those supplies, I called Paul's Ace Hardware, which is locally owned and operated, and they immediately gave us a generous donation and provided all the paint we needed to complete our project. I want to say thank you to Mark Spaulding and Spaulding Electric for donating his time and talent to our project and moving our electric lines. So what does this project mean to me? When the projects were first presented, I remember thinking, this project is so outside my wheelhouse, I hope I get assigned to one of the other projects. Fittingly, this became our team's project, and I'm so blessed that it did. It opened my eyes to serving children with autism and how amazing and special the students at the United School for Autism are, to the challenges faced by a brand new school trying to get its sea legs with very limited funding, to the importance of classroom environments, it stretched me in many ways, including how to ask for help and that people will respond generously. Working with Team Remodel has been a fantastic experience. We truly are a group with diverse skill sets and, that I, and I have learned that it is extremely important to give everyone an opportunity to put their specific talent to use. Leadership lessons learned for me is really to get involved, more involved with the community. Uh, this is the, really the first community project I've been involved with as an adult. Uh, and one that was extremely rewarding and will continue to be so uh, as we finish this project up. And also to trust your team members. Uh, it's, it's not always easy to let go of all the reins and let people take things on. Uh, that's not something I'm necessarily used to, but it worked out really well. And this is a great example of when allowing others to be experts in what they're experts at works best for the entire team. The whole team really, really came together. And I gotta say, I, I don't know, I'm. I feel like everyone says this, but this has to be one of the best teams that have ever come together for a project lead it forward. And their results of what they accomplished and what they provided for these students is, is going to be amazing and it's going to be long lasting for years to come. They'll be able to go and, and look at, be proud of what they did for these students. So it was a pleasure to work with them. Uh, they didn't need me, but it was sure fun to chip in whenever I could. Um, but what a great group of people and what a great project. Being in this room um, and creating that atmosphere of possibilities uh, was pretty amazing opportunity for us. So um, things that included um, just a, a work environment that was bright and energetic and um, had symbols of technology and pictures of technology, kids doing things, making things, um, binary codes, drones, things that our kids have heard of but actually maybe haven't connected that are technology driven or things that they could actually learn to do in this very classroom. So the improvements and enhancements for this classroom in itself created uh, inspiration for our kids. So it's not just about having computers and software in here, but it's what they're surrounded with that really is inspiring to them and what their possibilities are when they're here at our school learning about all of these things in this room. Oh, oh.